Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you my best tips and tricks for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with part one of a new series. We are going to be building your own tiered tray and I'm going to be sharing with you some tiered tray decor DIYs that are non-seasonal and Valentine's. My plan is for part two to come next week with St. Patrick's Day and spring, and then we'll continue from there moving through the seasons and different themes. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. you how to actually make a tiered tray out of Dollar Tree items. I'm using two sets of the burner covers, two of these beaded wood wreaths, and I am using four of the wood dice. Now the other two items that I'm using are not from Dollar Tree, but you can use the glass candlestick and vase from Dollar Tree instead. I'm just happening to use what I have on hand. So the four feet, and actually I do end up using a fifth cube um, in the middle of my project, but I don't paint that one here. So you can use four or five of these cubes and I am gonna paint them all black. I'm going to paint that wood candlestick, which I think this one was originally from Hobby Lobby. I got it from a thrift store. And then over on the right, the little finial thing, you could use, like I said, the glass candlesticks from Dollar Tree instead for this part. Now, using these bead wreaths makes this part a lot easier. If you don't see these in your Dollar Tree, you can use the bead strands, but I would suggest putting the beads on some wire instead of trying to individually glue all the beads. That is just a little bit of a nightmare. So what I'm doing with one of the wreaths here is I used my wire cutters and I'm just taking off, I think I took off three beads for this larger burner cover. And then I'm gonna reform the circle there so that it perfectly fits on the edge of the burner cover. Just use some pliers and bend that back into shape. You can trim off the excess, but for one, for the bottom burner cover, I took three beads off of this wreath. Now taking a second beaded wreath, I'm gonna open it up again. This one, I think I removed like 12 or 13 beads. Um, you'll just have to kind of hold it up to your burner cover to see how many you're going to need to again fit the circle around the outer edge there of the smaller burner cover. Next, I'm going to take a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue to glue down these wood beads that are on the wire to the burner cover. So we're going to first lay them on one of the burner covers, a small and a large, and then we will put the other burner cover on the other side of the beads in just a moment. So we're kind of making 
two sandwiches that have the beads in the middle. One small sandwich with two burner covers that are small and one larger sandwich with two burner covers that are the bigger size. Once all of that was dry, I did go around the inside and just reinforce the beads to the burner cover with some extra hot glue. This part will be completely hidden, so it's okay if you get it a little bit messy. I just wanted to make sure my pieces stayed together. You could add more E6000 on the inside if you wanted to as well. And I did this to both of my pieces. Next, we're gonna use that combination of E6000 and hot glue again. This time, I'm going around my second large burner cover. We'll put the glue down, and then we will put the other burner cover that already has the beads attached to it face down on this to make our large bead sandwich. Then we'll do the same thing with the smaller ones as well. Coming back to the larger burner covers, I'm now taking my four cubes and with a combination again of E6000 and hot glue, I'm gonna glue these kind of in a square shape to four of the corners around the edge of the circle. I will also say I will be adding a fifth cube right in the center just to give a little more stability to the middle part of this tiered tray. If you don't have these cubes, you can use other um, wood cubes or even tumbling tower blocks or just have it sit flat on your table. Now taking the longer wood candlestick, I'm gonna use E6000 and hot glue to glue this down to our burner covers. So I glued the top of this candlestick to the underside of the smaller burner covers. Now I'm gluing the bottom of it to the center of my larger burner covers. And somehow I missed filming it, but then I did take the little finial and glue that to the center at the very top of our tiered tray. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I am so, so glad that you found me. I sure hope you like what you see. You'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Also, be sure to click that bell. Just make sure your notifications are set to all so YouTube should let you know each time I go live on my channel or upload a new video. 
Next, we're going to make a variety of non-seasonal tiered tray decor DIYs. You can see here I'm using a variety of wood items, things from Dollar Tree. I'm going to share with you different techniques. So normally, I make faux book stacks using the wooden crates from Dollar Tree, but mine was out. So this time I'm using two of these rectangular pieces of wood. You can buy wood or have them cut it for you. You can see here I have two of them and I'm painting them to look like books with black covers. So I'm just gonna paint a face and the spine of each book with black and then we're going to come back in and paint the pages white. Once the books were dry, I did take my little sander and go around the edges just to give it a little bit more of a rustic look. And also then if I got any black paint on the white sections or white on the black, I kind of blended that in. So I'm gonna do the same thing with both of my books and then we're going to put them together in a book stack. Now I'm gonna show you a variety of ways you can personalize your tiered tray items. For this one, I'm going to use these um, family rolling pin words. I'm gonna do the word family on one of our books and the word blessed on the other. And since my book spines are black, I'm going to use my white chalk paste to stencil these words on the spines. And once our chalk paste is dry, we're gonna just stack the books together. I'm not gluing them together. And then I'm gonna take some Baker's twine that's black and white, just kind of going with the uh, general theme that could fit any decor. We're gonna wrap it a few times and then just tie the twine in a knot. You could definitely stop here if you like how that looks. I'm gonna take some black and white gingham ribbon and make just a simple bow that I'm going to glue to the top of that twine knot. I'm also going to tuck in some little pieces of some faux eucalyptus. Another popular item in tiered trays are blocks that spell different words. Now I've used the foam dice from Dollar Tree, I've used the wood dice from Dollar Tree, and I've used the wood craft cubes. These you can see are from a thrift store. These are old toy blocks, and I just happen to have a few left over from a future from a past project. And I'm going to paint the flat sides of these white. The tops and bottoms have a lot of texture to them. We're going to end up painting those black, but these faces of the block I'm going to paint white all the way around, and then we're going to add some stickers to spell home. Thank you. 
Once our blocks are all dry, I'm also going to take the sander and sand those edges between the black and white paint, just like we did on the book stack, to make them look a little more rustic and also to blend in any paint that may have seeped under the painter's tape. For this part, I'm going to use sticker letters, and you can use any sticker letters. I believe these are from uh, Dollar General, I think, but you can find them at Michael's, at Hobby Lobby, even at Dollar Tree. I'm going to put one letter on each block to spell home. House shapes are another tiered tray decor that are often seen for the different seasons. This one, I believe, was from Target, but Dollar, Dollar Tree has lots of different house shapes, Dollar General as well. So I'm taking this one, I think this was from the summer, like patriotic line for Target. And I like that white roof line. I'm just going to tape off the roof and paint the body of the house a solid black. Next, I'm gonna use this wood sticker letter from Hobby Lobby that I had in my stash. I'm gonna paint it white and we're gonna add this to the front of the house. Now you could also stencil a word on the front of your house. You could just leave it black and white. You could use stickers to add a word. Just use your imagination and the supplies you have on hand. So just trying to decide where I want to place the word. I always go to the right. So with this one, I chose to go over to the left with the word. And then I wanted to add just a little extra something. So I'm taking that black and white Baker's twine again. We're going to wrap it a few times around the house and then tie a bow over on the right. Next, I'm gonna take this square wood sign from Michael's in their 99 cent section. We're gonna make a little box sign. I'm also taking this black and white gingham scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I'm cutting it down to four and three eighths inches by four and three eighths inches. That's what's gonna fit inside the square box. So before I Mod Podge that in, I'm going to paint around the edges, the top edge and the inside of the frame with our black chalk paint. And once that paint is dry, we'll put some Mod Podge down on the back surface of our square, spread that out with our paintbrush, and then we're going to attach our piece of gingham scrapbook paper to the back of our box. I am going to spritz the back of it with a little bit of water just to minimize air bubbles between the wood and the paper. Then once our Mod Podge is dry, I'm gonna hot glue this little greenery wreath. This was actually from Christmas time, but I believe they have these in the wedding section all the time. There's little tiny uh, wreath decors. And then I'm just gonna add a black and white gingham bow to the top of the wreath. I was trying to decide what word to put on these and sometimes you don't need words. Sometimes you just find cute things at the store and you want to add them to your tiered tray. So this little black bottle with the key and the gingham ribbon was $1.25 at Dollar Tree. You could simply add this to your tiered tray, but I decided to give it a little something extra. I'm going to use one of my little mini stencils here from Magnolia with some white chalk paste. And I'm just going to add the phrase live simply to the front of my vase. All I'm gonna do to it after that is just put in a few pieces of some faux boxwood or eucalyptus, or you can do little flowers. I'm trying to keep it neutral with the black and white and green and add that to our tiered tray. 
Another decor piece that you'll often see in tiered trays is a beaded garland. So here I'm just taking some black and white beads. Fun fact, I actually bought long strands of red, white, and black beads from Hobby Lobby. They were originally marked $4.99. I bought them when they were half price. And I've just been cutting beads off of them as I need and then retying the string. So keep a lookout when they have those long strands of beads on sale. I'm using 20 of each color on this jute twine. And then here I'm going to tie this white tag that's from Magnolia. You can get tags from Hobby Lobby, any shape ornament you'd like. And I'm gonna double tie that. And then I'm gonna take my jute twine back up through a couple of the beads and then snip that so the end of my string is hidden inside the strand of beads. Next, I'm gonna take the rest of this jute twine and once I get it untangled, I'm going to wrap it around my fingers, about four fingers, um, as many times as I can. I did cut one little piece off that I'm gonna to use to tie the tassel at the top. So I'm wrapping that around and now I have a loop. I'm going to take the end of my string from my beads and put it through that loop and I'm going to tie a knot to attach this loop of twine to the end of my beaded garland. Once I have that on there securely with a knot, we'll kind of tie the neck of the tassel with um, another piece of twine and then get that ends of it all cut into a tassel. Now here, just like we did on the other end, I'm gonna take the loose string that we tied the tassel on with, and I'm gonna go up one of the beads and then snip it. So again, the end is hidden in the strand of beads. Now I'm gonna use another mini stencil on here. I love these. So I'm just using the black and white theme. So now we're gonna use black chalk paste <clears throat> on the white tag. Welcome to our home. Again, if you don't have stencils, Dollar Tree does have stickers, rub-ons that you could use, even the mini images from the Dollar Tree calendars. One of those would look really cute on this tag. And now to finish off the tag, because there is quite a bit of white space there, I'm gonna make two strips of the black and white gingham ribbon above and below our stencil. And once that's dry, I'll trim off the excess. I'm also gonna come around to the tassel side and just tie a bow with that same ribbon. And here is our tiered tray with the general non-seasonal tiered tray decor items we made today. I love how they turned out. And I find with this tiered tray, about six or seven items is about all you need. If you're on Facebook, I'd love it if you would head over there and find my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page. I do go live there multiple times during the week doing different projects than what I am sharing here on YouTube. Now we're gonna make a set of tiered tray decor using Valentine theme. We're gonna do some beads, some yarn, some pom-poms, some wood items from Dollar Tree. Some of the techniques will be similar. Some will be a little bit different just to give you a variety of ideas. Now here I have two of these wood hearts from Dollar Tree. They're a little on the thin side. So I'm actually gonna wood glue two of them together to make the tag for our beaded garland a little bit stronger. I also have a dark pink heart from Magnolia on the left there to give you another option as well. Now, just like I did before, I have this time the red and white beads from Hobby Lobby. I'm using a slightly thicker twine. So I did make sure to put some tape on the end to be able to string these on. I've got 20 white and 20 red.
And here again, I'm showing you how to make a tassel just by wrapping some twine around your fingers, tying it off at the top. This twine, like I said, is a little bit thicker, so it's making a thicker tassel, but you can really use any jute twine that you'd like. Once the tassel's made, I'm gonna take the twine at the end of my beads and fish that through the tassel and tie that on. And it is a little hard to see, but I am taking the end of the twine back up through that bead and then we'll trim it off. Next, I'm gonna use my Cropodile Big Bite to punch a hole in this pink heart so that I'll be able to string that onto my garland. I am also gonna use it to make the hole in the Dollar Tree ornaments bigger as well so that the twine I'm using will fit through no problem. And now that these are glued together, I'm just taking some acrylic paint. I think the color's called fuchsia maybe and I'm just going to paint both sides of this Dollar Tree heart. Again, I'm just giving you different options of things you can use to make a beaded garland for your tiered tray. Now coming back to the pink heart, I'm going to use another one of my mini stencils. This is from the brand new Valentine minis for this year and it's XOXO with cute little I think those are even little hearts in the letters and I'm gonna use white chalk paste to stencil this onto our heart. Then after we wait a couple minutes for that chalk paste to dry, we're going to tie our heart onto the other end of our strand of beads. Super cute, I love this. I'll also say that if you're not into the red and pink, if you have another color scheme you'd rather do, by all means, do whatever colors fit you. I'm taking this red and white gingham ribbon. I just wanted to add a small little bow at the top of our pink heart. Now this project is super simple like the vase from earlier. It's not even really a project. I found this cute little heart glass jar at Hobby Lobby and these pink and red pom-poms at Dollar Tree. So all I'm doing is taking a few of the red and pink pom-poms off of the strand. I'm stuffing them in the little jar and then we're just gonna put a little ribbon bow on the cork at the top of the jar. Another popular tiered tray item are these mini wood rolling pins. This one is from Magnolia, but I know you can also find these at Hobby Lobby. I have a piece of scrapbook paper there that I'm gonna cut to the width of the main part of the rolling pin. So I'm going to paint the two handles with this dark pink to complement that scrapbook paper. So just painting those, I just did one coat on each of the handles and then once that's dry, we will Mod Podge the scrapbook paper onto the middle of our rolling pin. So once I measured that middle section of the rolling pin, I'm going to trim my paper just a tiny bit smaller and then just give it, I think about four inches to be able to wrap all the way around. So once that paint is dry, I'm gonna just put some Mod Podge on the middle section of the rolling pin. 
spread that out with a brush and then line our scrapbook paper up and wrap it around. I will say that I did need to spritz the paper a little bit in order for it to fully adhere to the wood rolling pin. Then once that paper was dry, I'm gonna take that red and white gingham ribbon again, and I'm just gonna tie two knots pieces on the end of each side of the rolling pin. We are gonna make another faux book stack, but we're gonna do it differently. Like I said earlier, I usually make them with the wood crates from Dollar Tree, and I did have those two rectangular pieces of MDF in the earlier part of the video, but as I was wandering around Hobby Lobby, I saw this package of six paper mache rectangular boxes for $3, and I thought, you know what? I could take three of those lids and stack them together and make them an even smaller faux book stack. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna paint them three different colors, that bright pink, red, and white. And then once that paint is dry, we're gonna turn these into a stack of books. Now to add words to the spines of our mini books, I'm using these very small stickers that I still have from Creative Memories time. I am gonna stack them pink, white, and red, and we're going to put the words love you more. Once I had the stickers in place, I did go over the stickers with a little bit of Mod Podge so that the stickers would not peel off and it just kind of seals in the whole spine there with the stickers. Once that Mod Podge was dry, I did try to put a tiny bit of hot glue to kind of hold these lids together since they're not solid on the bottom. I ended up just holding them together and then doing like a line of hot glue just a little bit on the back where you wouldn't see it and then kind of spreading it out and doing that for all three of our little lids to make our mini mini faux book stack. I decided to use this red and white baker's twine to tie our little mini book stack together. And I just love how this turned out. I'm really happy that I was able to find something as an alternative uh, to the wood crates in order to make a faux book stack. And you're gonna see here in just a minute that I'm even gonna use the bottom parts of those boxes as well. But to finish off this book stack, I'm gonna wrap this twine around my fingers a few times and then tie it in the center to make a little bow for the top of our book stack.
This is another really simple idea that anyone can use at Hobby Lobby in their Valentine crafts. I found this package of six styrofoam hearts and I had some of this fuzzy yarn from I think Dollar Tree a long time ago I found this and I'm just going to take a long piece of it and I'm basically going to wrap the yarn around the foam heart. For this project I'm going to make one pink and one white but this is super easy to do and I'm just going to get it started by tying a knot around the bottom point of the heart and then wrap it attaching it at the end with a little dot of hot glue. And here's what it looks like, so cute. I'm gonna do a white one too. And here's where I said I'm going to use the bottoms of the boxes. I didn't wanna just waste those. So I'm gonna use four of them and I'm gonna make some faux blocks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give these bottoms of the boxes a coat of white paint. Next, I'm gonna take this DIY craft kit from Dollar Tree. It's got this wood piece that is love with a heart all connected. I'm gonna carefully take my scissors and I'm going to cut the letters apart. I will end up trimming a couple of the letters a little bit, but I want them to be the four separate letters so we can attach them to the blocks we're making out of the box bottoms. Next, I'm just gonna take some acrylic paint and I'm gonna paint the heart red and the other three letters, I'm going to paint a light pink. Once the paint is dry, I'm then just going to take some hot glue and I'm going to glue each letter to the bottom of the box or the front of the block, whichever way you want to look at it. I did not worry about painting the inside of the boxes because these are just going to be sitting on a shelf. No one's going to see the backs anyway. And you can see I did the heart box sideways. You can do them all different ways if you like. And I did trim the letters a little bit so that they could fit on the boxes. And here are the Valentine tier trade items we made in this video. I love how this turned out. And then I'm gonna show you a few other things that I picked up at Dollar Tree, little small things you can add to your tiered tray as well. I believe the little truck and sign were from Dollar General, but the little gnome was from Dollar Tree. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. If you have any theme ideas that you would like to see tiered tray decor for. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. Take care.